Hi and welcome to Orbit. How does the perfect smartphone look like and what can it do? Over 10 years now I tested countless smartphones and I always wondered what would happen if I picked the best of each of them and put it into one device. My dream display has symmetrical razor thin bezels, almost like the Galaxy S22 Plus with round corners and no curve. A large uninterrupted OLED display. I find the 6.4 inch size to be the perfect compromise between handy and still being enough for watching videos. Quad HD Plus is in terms of resolution the sweet spot and 120Hz as well, with LTPO 2.0 technology to save on power. A peak brightness of 1750 nits and 1200 nits sustained brightness. Thanks to new technology like on the Mi Mix 4, it is possible to have the selfie camera behind the display without a significant impact on quality. The fingerprint sensor in the display must be the super large one with ultrasonic sound from the iQ9 Pro. It recognizes the finger in just 0.2 seconds. One thing I have never seen before, but which should be technically possible, is a display with a matte finish. I love that on my monitor, iPad and camera not only does it eliminate reflections, you can hardly see any fingerprints and it would make particularly sense on a smartphone. Processor. All in all the best smartphone processor is the Apple A15 Bionic. I would still like to see a few features added from the Google Tensor chip such as the fast speak recognition and the ability to erase people in photos. For storage we will use UFS 3.0 plus SSD like on the Lenovo Legion since that is 50% faster. Together with 16 gigs of RAM this would be the smoothest, fastest, just best smartphone performance ever and software updates should be there for like 7 years. As for software I would like to go with Android 12 just like on the Google Pixel just with a few tweaks. The multitasking slider from OnePlus, the delete animation from Xiaomi, the twist and shake gesture from Motorola and everything to do with the S Pen and DeX from Samsung. The camera app is from Oppo iMessage AirDrop and the Apple Watch would be nice but even in my dream smartphone it seems to me really unlikely that Apple would cooperate. I haven't talked about the design much because it's quite subjective but there are some objective good ideas and good smartphone design is not only that a product looks expensive, it has to be practical but yet it has to be beautiful and bonus points are for like a unique design that you can recognize 100 meter away. A really small thing that has a big effect is a colorful power button with a slight texture. You can feel it blindly when you reach into your pocket. A matte frame keeps scratches and fingerprints better away than a polished one. Stainless steel is too heavy, aluminium is okay, I actually find it the best when there is no frame at all and everything is one unibody like the Google Pixel 5. The camera lenses are best when slightly recessed to protect them, either in a bar like on the Google Pixel 6 or in a slight slope like Motorola used to do it. The advantage of the latter is that the smartphone can be quite thin on the sides and the curvature fits nicely in the palm of your hand. I also liked the fact that you could choose wood as a material at Motorola, which supports wireless charging, is more brake resistant than glass and has a nice texture and also is a renewable resource. I also love it when you can see the technology inside, so the alternative would be a transparent bag with matte elements for more grip. At the bottom of the frame, why not a Samsung S Pen. Apple's MagSafe accessories are a great idea, but Motorola had something similar years ago and they did it better, the Moto Mods. There was a magnetic projector, Polaroid printer, 360 camera and additional battery. It really is a great idea, but really hard to do it right in reality. But this is my dream smartphone. Camera. I think the ideal setup for a camera hardware looks like this. Three lenses and the first is an ultra wide with autofocus and macro mode. Same sensor as on the main lens, but it don't has to be one inch big because it only makes the smartphone heavier and thicker. And so I think with software we can compensate for a little bit smaller sensor. The aperture of the main camera should be variable like in the past with Samsung and the most recent Xperia 
Xperia Pro I. That provides more sharpness during the day. I could well imagine the Oppo Find X5 Pro as a base with the 5-axis stabilization and the Mary Silicon processor, only with a newer, larger sensor. For the telephoto, I want a further development of the Sony Periscope technology. A variable zoom from 3 to 8 times would be perfect. And because of that, we don't need an extra sensor and save on space. And then there's LiDAR for perfect edge detection and AR apps. My favorite color science is the one of the Fuji cameras, so a cooperation with that camera brand would be amazing. Battery. Since we used a lot of efficient technology and software, it should be theoretically possible to have the battery life of the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is currently the best, but we are not satisfied with that. We use Oppo's new battery technology, which is twice as long lasting as Apple's and holds more energy in the same space and can be charged with up to 240 watt. That is 10 minutes from zero to 100%. Well, there is a lot of expensive tech in that smartphone, so it's really unlikely that it's $200, but it don't has to be $1000 either, because the margin on smartphones these days is quite big, almost 50%, so we could cut down on that a little bit and maybe sell it for $700. I think it's still a way to make money for the brand, but not that much money. They won't get like the most um, valuable brand in the world like Apple, but they will make the perfect smartphone, so they should be fine. A lot of people will buy it and I think $700 is reasonable. Well, that is my dream smartphone, but what does your dream smartphone look like? Write it down in the comments and I see you on the next one. Bye.